I'm going to lead us during this final session for today. It's about enabling technologies. We have uh, four speakers in uh, giving three presentations, and we're starting off with uh, Dr. Philip Daumke um, of Averbis. Um, he is a um, uh, trained medical doctor who did his training in, uh, mostly in Freiburg, but also Switzerland and Australia. And um, he has being the managing partner of Averbis Limited, in, or he is the managing partner of Averbis Limited in Freiburg. And uh, he has about uh, 15 years of text mining and search technologies under his belt. And for the last three years, he's been deeply involved in patent-related projects. And he's giving, giving us a talk today about a large-scale patent classification at the European Patent Office. Mr. Duncan. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for the nice introduction. My name is Philip. As I said, I'm a medical doctor, um, but as you mentioned, I uh, didn't want to become a doctor, so I went into IT as well, and now I'm here. And I also, um, while I have a focus on life science, I also um, yeah, work on patents over the last years quite a lot. And today I want to give a presentation about a project that we do together with the European Patent Office. Um, we are founded in 2007. Um, we are located in Freiburg in Germany. Our focus is on text mining. Um, we have a bit of a focus on um, life sciences. So about 75% of our revenue comes from pharma and healthcare projects. But we also have customers in automotive sector, publishers, libraries, so here's a bit of a list, um, some pharma companies that we work for. We also work for here for hospitals, work with clinical data. Here's the European Patent Office, uh, BMW. So these are more or less um, bigger companies that work with us because bigger companies have the money and the interest um, to work on big data and to, to exploit actually um, a lot of unstructured data. Um, under the hood, so we work in different areas, in healthcare, in patents, in pharma, for enterprise semantics, social media, and under the hood there are three main building blocks, so to say, um, which builds our expertise. The one is terminology management, we have our own terminology management system. Um, we do text mining a lot, and then we usually put our information into a search engine and provide a faceted search, a filtered search, and sometimes we also put it into NoSQL databases to do advanced um, analytics on this kind of data. Before I go into the uh, European Patent Office project, there's a few other um, examples. We had it from Dietrich this morning about the diagnosis support, and um, I think we make exactly what Dietrich um, um, showed this morning, we look for patient phenotypes in clinical data. Um, we currently focus on rare diseases. Why rare diseases? Because rare diseases are difficult to diagnose. And so even doctors, if they see a patient with a um, rare disease called Morbus Pompe, um, the doctor has problems to post the diagnosis. So we look for um, rare disease symptoms like facial weakness, core muscle weakness, myalgia, and so on, um, and try to identify patients that suffer from these phenotypes, symptoms, lab um, values, and so on, but they don't have a definite diagnosis yet. Um, as I said, we work on um, patent analytics, so this is a customer question, which glitazones, glitazones are patented for Alzheimer, Alzheimer and by whom? So we extract Alzheimer, the different types of glitazones and the assignees, and then you can, um, with one or two clicks, you get out the information. And this one was an example that was presented yesterday by Markus Bunchus, the um, gene disease associations, and we, couldn't, we put these um, triples, these informations, into a NoSQL database and put a lot of additional information like pathway, gene ontology, biofluids, internal databases, um, as well in this um, NoSQL database to get instantaneously, um, instantaneous access on this kind of data. Um, the um, European Patent Project, um, it was divided into two lots. 
The first one is pre-classification of unpublished patents in, techno in different technology fields. So patents come to the European Patent Office, they are not yet published, and um, first task is to identify which department um, has to take care or which department will decide whether this patent will be granted or not. There's a second task, which is the reclassification of already published patents. So patents will be categorized into um, um, different CPC symbols, a categorization system that I will present in a few minutes. And the system changes over time. It currently has something like 250,000 um, categories in there, and it's continuous, continuously enlarged. And every time when a patent or a category is subdivided into 10 new um, um, categories, then of course all the patents that have this code must be reclassified, and there they need tool support. And today I want to talk about this first scenario, the pre-classification of unpublished patents in different technology fields. A few words about the European Patent Office. It's the second largest intergovernmental institution in Europe. It's not an EU institution, so there are also uh, member states not coming from the European um, Union. Um, it's self-financing. It has about 6,000, so that was in 2008, um, almost 7,000 um, people working for them. And about 60% of them, so roughly about 5,000 people are um, examiners. They do nothing else but looking into patents and deciding whether they want to grant it or not. Um, the number of patent applications per year, this one was in 2013 at the European Patent Office was, so this one was the patent applications, about 265,000 patent applications. About roughly a good third comes from member states of the European, uh, of the EPO, and the rest comes from the US, from Japan, they are well, they, they write a lot of patents, and other um, countries that apply for patents at the European Patent Office. Um, this is the formal procedure on a very high level. So if somebody applies for a European patent, uh, it first gets files and some formalities are examined. Then there will be created a search report together with a preliminary opinion. And this one will be published, so everybody has access on it. <clears throat> Based on the search report, the um, applicant has the possibility to refine, to um, go into more details and so on. Um, then there will be a substance, uh, substantive in, um, examinations, and at the end it will be decided whether it's going to be published or whether it will be refused. And finally, about, I guess, something like 100,000 patents per year, something I'm not completely sure, are finally granted per year. Um, we want to look at this procedure here. So if a European patent comes in, who of these 5,000 people who do the examinations get actually this um, classification. That is the task that I want to talk about. This is the process. An early patent, so not yet published, comes in. There are people that do nothing more than giving this patent an early CPC code. Uh, CPC code is a patent classification code. And on the other hand, you have the directorates. So there are about 150 different directorates at the European Patent Office. And it has to be decided, um, does this patent goes to this directorate, this directorate, or this directorate? Um, this person here has about currently 10 minutes to decide which directorate shall get it. Um, and you can count yourself based on t almost 300 thousand applications per year, how time-consuming that is. So this one needs automated tool support. Um, we start with a, um, looking at the early patents first. So this one is how a patent looks like. Who of you knows how a patent looks like? Half about, so I have to, so I briefly explain it. There's a title, there's an abstract, like in a research article that describes a bit what's about. There are images. Then there's a very long description. It can be 50 pages sometimes, uh, even longer. 
And then there's a separate claim section that um, expresses um, in detail what actually is claimed in this patent. There's a lot of metadata available, like the publication number, publication type, um, filing date, priority date, and so on. This one is copied from Google Patent, so this one is a granted patent. It looks quite good. The early patents can come basically in in every format you want. Um, there's no need that it needs to be um, in this structured format. So there's a huge effort by the European Patent Office to do OCR of, um, of patents, um, to scan patents, OCR them. It can be even handwritten, I guess, um, and then to automatically classify it into a right department. So this one is um, more or less the reality. We did some examination of what is in the data that we get, what is in an early patent, and only about roughly a th um, the half of it um, has a proper abstract, a claims and a description, but we also have a significant amount of patents coming in that only have a claim, where the either there is only a claim or the OCR recognized only a claim, um, then we have claims and description, but no abstract. So there's really some uh, low quality data coming in um, with the regards to these early patents. Um, the use case is multilingual. The European Patent Office accepts um, the, patents, uh, the patents in um, various languages. Most of them are, of course, English, but then you also have patents, uh, the second most prominent language is English, uh, German, sorry, and then you have French as the third um, most prominent language. But um, for French, uh, you see that the number of French documents is quite small, so there's also a bit of, um, we do it with um, statistical tools where we need training materials, so there's also a problem with training material um, regarding patents that are in the non-English language. I explain that in, um, in, in the following slides. The reclassification process, we go on with the CPC codes or with the assignment of an early code. Um, CPC codes is the patent classification system. It's based on older version um, that you may know, probably heard of the IPC codes. Um, they are created by the EPO and the US Patent Office, so at least there's a common, CP, uh, common um, code scheme now for um, many patent offices, and it currently, as I said, contains about 250,000 classes. Um, 160,000 of them are used in the main trunk, so um, a patent needs to be assigned to one or many of these, and then there are about 80,000 in, uh, indexing symbols and about another 7,000 of um, additional symbols. This one is how a CPC looks like, an arbitrary CPC code, A61B5-00, detecting, measuring, and recording of diagnostic purposes, um, and so on and so on. So you look, it's really a classification code. It's not like a terminology that you could exploit directly to do text mining. So um, you could ask, for example, oh, why do, don't you just look for keywords in the text, and if there's the keyword diagnostic purposes, then um, it fits to this class. These ones are rule-based approaches, and over the years it has shown that these rule-based approaches do not properly work, so we need some statistical um, tools um, in addition, or mainly um, statistical tools that automatically categorize um, the patterns based on training material. Um, still, we are thinking about exploiting this kind of information also for categorizing the patents into the right um, CPC code. But uh, as you see here, there needs to be a lot of work done to translate it into a form that is terminology-like that you can exploit di directly for text mining. Um, we do not have to classify in our scenario the patents into a CPC symbol down to the very um, far bottom. We need to classify it up to a CPC symbol that decides um, 
upon which a decision can be made to which directorates it goes. So again, to repeat it, the EPO has 130 directorates, so different departments that decide whether or not a patent is granted. They have an intermediate layer, which is about one, um, so the, I call them here EPO internal ranges. There are about 1,500 ranges um, defined, so one directory has about uh, what is it? About 10, 15 ranges that um, it is responsible for. And then all the CPC codes that are exist are, uh, belong into one of these ranges. So our primarily goal is to find the right range, and from the range you then know which directorate you have to go. Why is there this intermediate layer? Because um, directorates often changes, and so they do not want to connect directorates directly to CPC codes. This is why there's an intermediate um, um, yeah, layer in between. So the actual task is to classify patents into one of these 1,500 um, um, ranges, which is still quite a lot of um, classes. Um, for machine learning tasks, or usual machine learning tasks are more in the area up to a hundred or so classes. Um, this one is quite a tough task. Um, okay, this one is where um, the EPO seeks for some tool support, which we provide. So we want to help these people here, or to automate this process here, and to do this one automatically. Um, so the specific task is to automatically assign a patent to one or n um, internal code ranges, then to identify those assignments with the highest confidence. So we do not have to automatically route every patent into the um, correct department. It would be even a help to, um, even if we um, can um, map, let's say, 30-50% of the documents automatically to a department. But this with a high, co um, high quality, this would also be a great help. Um, so there's a second task to identify those who have the highest confidence where the machine was um, very likely to be correct. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with um, machine learning or supervised learning, um, Here's a scheme how it basically works. You have the patents and label patents on the one hand side. So this means patents and you have so old data that is already published, published data, published patents that have already assigned one or, one or many CPC codes. And this one is our labeled data. This um, constitutes our training data. Um, the training data, um, will then serve to learn a statistical model. This is done automatically. Um, with a statistical model, you can predict new data. So you can classify um, new data, and this data then is reviewed and can serve as new training data. So it's a continuous process um, um, that is described here. Um, our system, some facts about the um, the current project, we currently have 650,000 training documents um, ranging from 2005 to 2013. So there's an, also an issue um, how far back to you go with all your data. Um, does um, data that comes from, let's say, the 1990s, which is also available, does that help to predict in which department a new um, patent goes um, potentially a complete new technology that didn't exist 20 years ago. So we decided to start from 2005 uh, with about this amount of um, training data. We used, as I said, a supervised learning approach. Um, we have in our company mostly we use a support vector machine, a lightweight support vector machine, which is fast. Um, it's a linear support vector machine. The training time um, on, this, um, on this hardware is about we need one hour to extract the features from this data. These are several gigabytes. Um, the training of the classifier needs about one hour. And then we usually um, do 90, 10 tests of this data. So what does that mean? Um, we split 
the 650K of training documents into two proportions, 90 for training, 10 for testing. Um, and then we train with the 90% and we predict on the 10%. And um, we do that many times. Um, you, you repeat this um, as often as you can in order that m at least one percent is predicted at least once, and then you get a feeling of how good your qualifier is. So if you predict on the remaining 10 percent, you know, let's say, okay, I have a, a currency of, um, let's say, 50, 60, 80 percent um, um, prediction. This one is... Um, this is why we usually do 90-10 tests to test how good we can pre predict. Um, I explain um, on the next slide why we have this um, look ahead with three levels. Um, yes, this one is explained in, on the next slide. As I said, and the prediction takes us about um, yeah one. So the, the, the requirement is that we achieve one prediction per second or five documents in five seconds. Um, the new um, approach, at least for us, was that you cannot really learn a, statistic, um, a statistical model based on 1,500 classes. It's just too much. Um, um, the prediction quality wouldn't be as good. So what did we do? We decided for a hierarchical approach. Um, it's shown here, though, so this one actually uh, represents a bit the CPC code. On the first level, you have the CPC uh, main number, the A, and then you go to the, uh, so the section classifier, then you have the class um, um, level, then you have the subclass level, so you see the A, the M61, the F, the 0009, and so on. And on each level, there's a new pr um, prediction done. So at first we decide, do that pattern belongs to section A, B, um, C, F, G, or so on. So there's a one, in this example, there's a one out of five um, possibility where the um, pattern um, can go. On the next section then, we um, there's no classification decision to be made, so there's only one um, class level below the section class level, and then on the next level again there's um, four um, subclasses under it. So we actually, per patent, we do not have one prediction, but we have many. So here's one, here's another one, here's another one, and here's another one. And this makes the task computable um, and manageable, actually. Um, there are a few problems or a few um, challenges with this approach. Again, maybe I start with this one. The question is which path, um, path um, is the best? So let's say a new pattern comes in and on the section level um, the classifier say, okay, I'm 90% I'm sure it should be this way, but the other class is also not too bad. 80% sure that it goes this way. On the next level, you say, okay, if I'm here, I would say 70% that is this section, 60% that is um, this section. And so it's not very easy to say which of these results is now the best. Is it this way or is it this one? Which path um, do the patent go? Um, so we do a lot of look-aheads and finally we try to predict the three paths uh, with the highest um, confidence um, of the system, and then um, yeah, we return three possible alternatives. Next point is um, identify the ones with the highest confidence. So let's assume these ones are patent predicted patterns. The green ones are correct. The red ones are uh, wrong. Um, the European, European Patent Office says, well, you don't have to predict all patterns correctly but the ones that you predict, they shall be correct. So please give me only the correct ones. Uh, so the tough task is to identify which ones um, in this thing are the correct ones. Fortunately, there's a um, correlation between confidence and accuracy. So confidence is a system value. The system says I'm 90% confident that I'm correct with my prediction. And this more or less uh, correlates to accuracy, so that is really correct. 
Um, so um, by giving, by identifying the patterns with the highest confidence, we can have an um, implicit marker that the patent is also correctly um, classified. It's not 100% sure, so you can also have the example where you have, uh, where the system is very confident that it was correct, but it was actually completely wrong. Uh, it went into uh, the right, uh, into the wrong class. Um, and again, so it's not a trivial task in a hierarchical learning to find the best confidence. So usually in a normal um, classification setting, you just have these values, you just have um, uh, mono-hierarchical learning, so you know the best value has ordered uh, 9, the second best value has ordered 8, so you will probably go for this one, but in a hierarchical setting, you're not sure whether you really want to follow this way or you might follow that way. And this is one of the particular challenges that we are currently faced with. Um, the current status. It's currently under evaluation by the EPO. Um, I cannot um, give you some details about quality, current qualities. It's on also an ongoing um, improvement process currently now. I have the approval to show these slides um, on this level by the European Patent Office. It's, um, the tool or the software, the service is planned to go live in April. Um, and starting from then, there will be a continuous quality optimization. Um, we discussed that also yesterday already a lot. How can you improve the uh, quality of the categorization process? The one is, of course, working with high-quality training material. Um, I showed you in the beginning how early patterns can look like. And then there are a lot of additional features, a lot of information in the um, patterns that are already of great relevance. First of all, the references. So if you find a reference in the early patents that reference an already existing patent, you can look in what category this already referenced patent uh, belongs to. And this gives you an addition, um, additional information. Um, then the applicants. Um, I guess that most um, companies have their preferred CPC symbols where they appear. And the third one would be to include information coming from the CPC classif classification scheme. So there are inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria defined um, in the CPC classification system and we try to use this information and extract this information via text mining from patents and then to improve the quality of the prediction um, for new patents. This was my last slide. Thank you very much for your, um, yes, great, how do you say, um, attention and audience, and I'm open to questions. Thank you. Thank you.